like scary we are back i hope you all have an awesome day i'm having an awesome day it feels great to be a horror fan so you all today we're going to talk about two things the original plan for halloween ends which is freaking crazy and danny mcbride co-writer on halloween ends basically touching on a criticism from the Halloween fans and I want to talk about what he said so before we get started definitely smash the like button because it definitely helps so with an article on screen right with Danny McBride he kind of you know is in an interview and it, it gets to the Halloween ends talk and he kind of touches on the final film in her trilogy which is very interesting from what he said and um, I want you guys to comment down below what you think you know um, about everything he said I think that it's a valid criticism. All three of these movies was really David Green's sort of brainchild. He had a very distinct idea of what he wanted to do with this. And I just felt lucky that he brought me along for the ride to help him. Whether I could and try to give him anything, I could on it. And when he told me this pitch for focusing on Corey, this Corey character, I thought that it was cool. I thought it was a smart take on it. I thought that it was a way to avoid repetition and sort of explore something a little different and still tying it to what Halloween's ultimately about. So to kind of touch on what Danny McBride said, he basically is saying that it was, you know, valid. What, what, what the fans have been saying is valid. You know, it's not like, uh, no, you guys are wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. He's actually, you know, agreeing with the fans, but it's, um, you know, in a cool type of way. He's not, you know, down in David Gore and Green or nothing. He's saying he actually thought that the plan with Corey is actually cool, which I think, you know, is very unique when you sit there and think about it. The plan they did with Corey is cool. I think us fans, you know, diehard Halloween fans, to be honest, we just are upset that, you know, we thought from posters and promotion, that we were going to get, you know, Lori versus Michael, this big showdown, similar to 78. I'm not going to lie. I did think that we are going to get something similar to 78, but, like, 78 on steroids, but they're going back and forth, like, almost how, like, a brother and sister fight, like, with some emotion tied into it, and it's just, like, a lot of anger, and they're going to go back and forth and give each other bruises and get wounds and everything. I mean, that was the case. It was a great final battle, but... We just thought it was going to be more of 78 and their story kind of coming into con to a concluding full circle. But um, we got this new character in the final act. And I've always said this, man. If Corey Cunningham was Cameron, if Corey Cunningham was Cameron, I mean, I know that would have took the, the, the crazy death away that we got in kills with Cameron. But imagine if Corey Cunningham was Cameron. Like, it could have kind of played in that scream, who done it, like big reveal type of, you know, ballpark where... We're getting this build up with this Corey character, which is Ron Campbell, and we push him through, and we're like, oh, that's Allison's boyfriend. And then he gets, you know, the evil transfer in a final film. We're like, no, not Corey. And, and, it, and I feel like our emotions would have been more attached to Corey, knowing that he's been there since Jump in his trilogy. You know what I'm saying? If you think about it like that, it, it would have definitely worked. And I, I still like, you know, Corey being, you know, inserted in the final act just off the fact of. The character, man, the development and his story and, you know, how he pushed through with his issues and he became a shape and he took out the bullies and everything. I think that was just cool, you know, a cool story. Only thing is, just off the f the lack of Michael in this, you know, um, film is just, you know, a lot of us, we, we, we kind of were shocked. And, you know, this film did split Halloween fans down the middle. And I'm, I'm on the side of the fence. I actually do enjoy Halloween ends for what it is. You know, I know it's kind of sometimes here and there when you watch you kind of just see like damn there's no michael and you kind of because i've watched it a handful of times i'm like what if michael was right there what if they inserted him right there? And i always say this i'm gonna stick to it right there when allison and corey are kissing up the stairs if you would have put michael right there and took corey out or whatever you wanted to do it would have been perfect and i know people say he actually was in ends more than 78 which is true but they utilized his time more in 78 you kind of just clumped all of his presence in one section in this film really you know you don't get michael to the final act 
And um, just when, like, you know, touching on what Danny McBride said, it is, you know, valid what he's saying. Like, you guys are right. But I definitely, I definitely like, you know, him being different, trying to take that risk, which I respect. I, I definitely agree with Danny McBride about, you know, because you don't want it to be too repetitive. But he could have still, in my opinion, did something different with Lori and Mike without being repetitive. That's just my opinion. But, um, yeah, you guys, so comment down below what you think about what Danny McBride, you know, said about everything with, uh, with the fans and, you know, not, you know, Les Michael. It was just like the, it was just a minimum presence of Michael in that film. And it was just, you know, all the build up, the speculation and all the hype around it. We kind of got there and we're like, damn, we thought we were getting full blown Michael. But when they break it down and say like, hey, Kills was Michael's movie. This is Lori's movie. You know, this is her send off, her getting her flowers. And, you know, Kills is more of Michael having fun in the circus and he just clowning. Um, you start to be like, damn, that you know, they kind of just gave us sections and everything, but they spoiled us with kills. Let's be honest, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna type. I want to see my guy Michael, man, Michael freaking Myers. That's our guy. But um, to kind of touch on the original ending, uh, another article by Screen Rant that one of you guys sent me, which I appreciate it. Um, so kind of touching on this article, basically, um, they kind of touched on to kind of sum it up. The end of Halloween Kills. Lori picks up Michael's butcher knife. And leaves the hospital intent on hunting him down. The pandemic delayed the sequel's original release plan. And since this ending appeared to set up that Halloween ends would continue on the same night. But it was cut. It was cut, guys. So to kind of continue on in this article saying that it would have stretched to have the badly wounded Lori continue to battle Michael on the same night. But that would have made for a more dramatic bout to. One of the most elements of Halloween Kills involved the repeated Evil Dies Tonight chant of Haddonfield Residence, which, of course, didn't come to pass. Instead, Michael dispatched nearly all of his pursuers and went to survive another four years. Had, had Halloween ends picked up right off the kills, it actually could have kept this Evil Dies Tonight promise, which I'm not going to lie. Um, How do you guys feel about this? Now, I remember the time jump got kind of announced we have the same thing fans were split people like hey man we don't want no time jump we want to see what happens when Lori walks out the hospital with the knife she you know and i remember being in the theater with kills and just seeing karen get stabbed up i'm like wow and then kind of pans off the Lori looking out like the, the glass and everything and michael standing in the window like she felt like damn karen was dead and that was a crazy way to end off in kills i did not even think None of that was going to happen. You know, the payback scene when Michael puts the mask on, he takes out the mob. And even after he took out the mob, I thought he was going to kind of go out into the darkness and leave for a couple of years. So, I mean, Time Jump kind of incorporated in that theory. But he kind of goes over a street and takes out, you know, Karen. Like, hey, hello, motherfucker. Like, yeah, you remember? You just kind of set me up across the street. I, it's all that gotcha. Man, I don't know how many times Karen, gotcha, gotcha. Michael's like, all right, you know what? You want to do that's the vibe I got. And he stabbed and he was like aggressive with it. And he stepped over and she's just, you know, bleeding and everything. But then with the alternate ending, you know, she's laying right there. And um, I know why they cut that because it's like Michael's not about to pick up a damn iPhone and just open it, right? But it was, you know, it was a great idea how they kind of had it back and forth for him and Lori. Lori picks up the phone, she's like, I'm coming for you, Michael. And she drops the phone with the butcher knife that Allison left with her. And um, I'm like, bro, like, you know. The fan in me would have been like, hell yeah, let Lori go out with staples and in her stomach and let her go to war with Michael. She has that anger in her. She might do some crazy shit and take this man out. But the reality of me, like, I see why they didn't continue on the same night because in all reality, if Lori's, she got need in her stomach in a hospital and went down for the count. So imagine if Michael just does something down there to where her staples is. She's done for, you know. Um, But it would kind of would have been cool if, you know, how Halloween ends, we got, like, Lori... And Michael, they're battling, but Ma and just kind of had Allison a part of like double team and Michael. I think that would have been cool. You know what would have been crazy though? Okay, Halloween night. So this whole thing was Halloween night 2018 and kills, and then it kind of branched off four years later and became ends. But they would have kept the original idea, you guys. We would have had a November 1st Halloween movie. Like it would have went into November 1st. Like, pro you know, I mean, that story, if you think about that whole trilogy, was crazy. Like, what, 2018 and kills. Like, damn, were we going to see Michael in the crack of dawn of the morning? Like, you know, fucking fog and everything outside and school buses going off and they're battling and it's fucking smog out. Uh, so, yeah, you guys, I think that would have been cool to see how it would have played out. But I'm not going to lie. Only way that would have worked if they kind of plant off, kind of plant like, 
I think that would have worked if they plan, okay, we're going to get Lori, you know, out of here. We're going to kill her off. And Michael just kills her ASAP. Like, they're fighting it. And then the final battle is actually the new generation, which is Allison and Michael. And you could kind of incorporate Corey if that was the plan, you know. A lot of stuff got changed um, due to the pandemic, from my understanding. You know, once the pandemic and everything happened, they kind of changed plans. They kind of got pushed back and delayed. And then we kind of found out it was, like, a lot of reshoots and stuff going on. So, yeah, you guys. But... Unfortunately, this is the end of the video. Comment down below what you guys think about everything we talked about. Um, I want you guys to hit me up on my social medias at I like scary on Instagram. I like scary underscore on TikTok, Brandon on Facebook, I like scary on Twitter. And yeah, you guys, right there where it says subscribe. Next to it, click join to become a member of the channel. I want you all to watch some horror movies. Stay scary out there. I love you all. Peace.